Good morning, everybody. Light crowd today. Um, I, Beth Grigg, the Regional Director of Resident Services for Life Care Services, was supposed to be here today. Unfortunately, she has to reschedule till November or December. She had to fly up to Georgia um, to help one of our communities there. They were not as fortunate as us getting through last week's storm. So we have a lot of our LCS folks um, helping at communities in Georgia and North Carolina. So with that, before I get into my updates, uh, we have Deputy Mary here that wants to share some information about what's going on with storm cleanup here in our area. So I'll turn it over to Deputy Mary. Hey, good morning. So our area, although we did not get a direct hit, we had a lot of storm surge. And there are several of our neighbors over here in Ruskin and Apollo Beach that have lost their entire homes. Uh, there are a lot of them on the canal in Apollo Beach got three to four feet inside their home. And so right now we're doing a lot of cleanup. We're doing a lot of FEMA distribution and trying to get those people's lives back together. Uh, it's, it's pretty bad. I don't know if any of y'all ever been to the South Shore Chamber building. That got two and a half feet of water inside. So yesterday we ripped everything out of that. It's going to take a while to recover. And it was all storm surge. It was all the ocean pushed in, the gulf pushed in by that hurricane up into our the little manatee and all the canals and, and the bay. One thing I ask, don't go over there and look. We've had a lot of, I mean, like yesterday, it was nonstop. Like, we couldn't get through there. And it wasn't people that were going to help. They just wanted to see the, the disaster and the destruction and the everything. Um, you know, like this morning, Pinellas County opened up to the public, and so people are going over there to look because those beaches over there are no longer where the beach is. It picked up all the sand and moved it inland and destroyed places, buildings, restaurants. So let us clean it up. Let us do, you know, what we can, and then, you know, then you can go over to those places. Now, if you want to help, there are a lot of donation centers set up right now. The biggest one is at Circles and Salty Shamrock. And what they're asking for is linens, cleaning supplies. Because they, they have to go in and they have to clean these homes. They have to gut them, they have to rip them out, and then they're going to sit until they can find a contractor to put them in. So if you've got any of those donation things, you know, or you want to go out and go to Publix or go to Walmart and help, Salty Shamrock, which is Apollo Beach in 41, and then Circles, which is Apollo Beach Boulevard, those are, those are two donation spots. We're not taking anything at the chamber because again, the chamber building is itself is, has been destroyed. So we can't use that as a drop point. There are two FEMA sites, one in Ruston, one in Apollo Beach for distribution of water, ice, blankets, stuff like that. Um, I don't think any of y'all are in need of any of that stuff, but if you know somebody that is, direct them to, to one of those because also there are resource centers where we can help people tell them what you know what the next steps are and what other assistance that, that, that there is available to them. All right. Any questions on any of that this morning? All right. Thank you. Thank you to Deputy Mary. Um, I'll just piggyback on some of that information. Um, we did we as I mentioned in the memo that went out yesterday, um, we did have some employees that were significantly impacted by the storm last week, um, flooding and have, you know, are really dealing with a lot of cleanup. Um, there was a list of items that we are collecting um, to give to them and distribute. So if you want to donate, um, you can drop those items off at the front desk and we're, we're going to transport them down to Plaza Central, which is the building behind Plaza West, and we'll distribute those items accordingly. I know um, the memo went out yesterday afternoon and by this morning we had two big cartloads of items, so we really appreciate it. The employees appreciate it. And then I had some residents asking if we could accept cash payments for uh, the Red Cross, and Salvation Army, other um, organizations that assist with relief in these situations. And we don't want to be a middleman um, and collect money for other uh, other organizations, but very easy to donate directly to those 
organizations on their website online or there's options on the website if you want to mail a check it tells you exactly where you can mail it um, and I know those uh, those organizations provide a lot of relief to folks too and I think there's even an option as I was looking through the sites that if you want to donate to a specific location that you can do that as well so if you have questions on that you can stop by see me see Stephanie and we can show you the website and how to maneuver that if that's something you're interested in doing um, one thing to staff last week I was out at the beginning of the week in Des Moines um, wondering if I was going to be able to get back in time I was uh, lucky enough to get back into Tampa shortly before they closed the airport so I was here Thursday until Friday morning um, we always have the team that's willing to stay, uh, to prepare before the storm, stay through the storm, and then a team that comes in right after the storm uh, passes and sort of takes up over from the, from the A team. So very appreciative of the team we have working here, um, both uh, department heads and frontline staff willing to be here and help with anything that's needed. So I appreciate that very much. Um, want to start then we'll go to something positive uh, which is our employees of the month for october so for independent living it's dolce sores for housekeeping um, for assisted living in the arbors it's kathy manchese who is an lpn at the end uh, if you spend time there it's very pleasant always easy to talk to and plaza west is cleo spence which is an lpn i didn't i just got that information this morning so um, when I get the pictures, I'll send them out via email with the memo tomorrow. Um, another topic I wanted to cover was um, we talked a little bit, I think, in one of our last meetings about uh, our budget preparation and meeting with resident leaders. So we did that two Fridays ago. Um, we reviewed the 2025 operating budget as it stood at that point, as well as talked about some of the capital requests that we're submitting for next year. And we're going to send out that information to you all as it sort of gets a little more solid and final. So look for that in the next couple of weeks. We're gonna do a presentation up here in the auditorium for that as well. So we'll share that, that information as soon as we have it uh, defined. Um, from when we finished doing the budget, um, it's presented to um, the Life Care Services Executive Committee in Des Moines and I think that's happening the week of October 14th and then it's presented to Health Peak so um, we should know pretty certain um, what our our budget's going to look like for next year in the next two to three weeks so we'll schedule that meeting that we can share it with all of you once I know um, it's it's solid for the most most part um, another topic is I want to talk about scams and we talk about it often and I often put updates in the memo about what the current scam that people are trying to use to collect money from folks and it's become in the last few months we've had a lot of residents um, be victimized by scams that are going around and our team is spending a lot of time with those residents trying to unwind um, some of the, the financial um, impacts that these people have had on the residents. So I want to say these things, and I mean it in all seriousness, even though it sounds a little funny to some folks. Um, I really want to, you know, make it clear, you should never ever go buy gift cards for anybody that calls you on the phone. Um, that is a scam um, in various forms. They will claim to be a celebrity or a family member of a celebrity or um, somebody and there's a child in need and they need gift cards whether that's you know a visa gift card um, and we have residents going out and purchasing thousands of dollars worth of gift cards and mailing them to people um, it's unfortunate and we're trying very hard to discourage it but I guess what I would ask of you is if you're getting calls or emails or text messages requesting any kind of money or bank information or credit card information or wanting you to buy gift cards and it sounds legitimate to you um, come to me go to lisa go to stephanie stephanie loves it when i volunteer her for things um, 
and and let us take a look at it and and we'll look into it we'll talk to these folks we'll try to communicate to these folks um, but I will tell you 99.9% .9 of the time these things are not legitimate it is just a way to get money from you all and we don't want that to happen um, give a sales update so we just had an amazing third quarter um, our sales team is just doing a fabulous job. We had 18 sales in the third quarter, which is amazing. Our budget was only 13, so we exceeded our budget by five sales. Um, we are going to, and I don't want to, like, I don't want to now go wah, wah. We had 17 move outs. So the positive thing is we did have a net gain of one. We will take any net gain we can get. So we're looking for even more net gain in the fourth quarter. We already have two deposits for the fourth quarter, and we're in the first day of the fourth quarter. So the team is doing an amazing job. Some of the new things we're doing, um, we are making a concerted effort to have an event every week, even if it's a small event that maybe only two or three people come to, and we're doing different things like lunch with the executive director. There's gonna be a lunch with me every month where I have um, lunch with prospects. And we're trying to keep it small that we fit in a, a private dining room. Um, we're also gonna do something called the Taste of Freedom where it might be done in a model and Chef Jamie's gonna do maybe a cooking demonstration of a particular um, recipe and then we'll give out um, a wine pairing, a bottle with the wine pairing that goes with whatever he's making. Um, we're going to do an educational event every month. Um, that's where the folks come to the Plaza Club and we do a presentation on how great Freedom Plaza is um, and they get a nice meal. And then we try to do a lifestyle event and that's where we partner with Susie in one of the events she's having here at Freedom Plaza and invite some of our uh, prospects that are real close to move into Freedom Plaza and let them come see what great events we do at the community. So we're trying to go at people from all angles and, and give them opportunities to get all the information they need. And with that, we have some lovely ladies up here um, holding poster boards. So we're, we're starting a new um, resident referral program. Let me look at it. I'm gonna screw it up. Flamingos flock together. So you may see flamingos around the community. So we're encouraging you to refer your friends to Freedom Plaza. And our resident referral credit is going to be $4,000 in the fourth quarter. So if you refer somebody and they close by December 20th, so we're not going to say the end of the year because we make, th we make ourselves crazy the last few days of the quarter trying to get everybody's paperwork signed. So we want folks to close a little earlier in the month if possible. Um, but these posters will be around the community. I'll put something in the Wednesday memo as well. But if you want to learn more about what the resident ambassadors um, are doing, um, please contact marketing. We'd love to have you in the ambassador uh, program. Um, they work closely with marketing and getting uh, folks to move to Freedom Plaza. And then along those lines, I think I've mentioned in some other meetings over the course of the last few months is that the leadership team here is trying to figure out how we formalize our new resident orientation. And I know the residents do a great job. The residents have their host program. They're assigning hosts to new residents to get them familiar with the community. And a lot of the, the leadership team does a great job of introducing themselves to the new residents and. I meet a lot of folks when we do their closing and sign paperwork, as does Dennis, but we felt like it was important to kind of make something a little more formal. So uh, we're, form we're about 95% done. We're creating these really nice binders with information on every department and how to contact them, who's in that department, what do we do, um, just basic information for new residents to kind of give them the lay of the land um, when they move in as a new resident. So what, how we're going to distribute that binder is when somebody moves in, Lisa's going to go up and introduce herself to the new resident on the day they move in, maybe the next day, but within the first day or two of move in, Lisa's going to go up and introduce herself to them. And then every month, 
we're still finalizing the date, but it's gonna be something like the last Monday of every month. We're gonna have um, a time that anybody that's moved in in the last month comes to the club room. All the departments are gonna be represented there. We're gonna put their binder together for them as they go through each department. Um, we'll probably have goodies for them to take with them with their binder, answer any questions they have. Um, and then we're gonna know if somebody doesn't show up. So we're gonna know if we've had five people move in and only three folks come to this little event that we have that we're gonna follow up with them and give them their binder and any um, goodies that we have for new residents. Cause we wanna make sure everybody has all the information they need. So we're really close to finalizing that. We're probably gonna have our first new move-in session at the end of October. Um, and then we will send out a soft copy of the binder for all of you so you can see what we're giving out um, and let us know if we need to add anything or update it. Um, it is pretty fluid, um, so obviously we're gonna have to make changes as things change, so I'm happy to have your feedback on that. Also, um, later this month we're doing an employee engagement survey. So you all had your resident survey last year and so what we do is alternate years. One year we'll do a resident survey, the next year we do an employee survey. And so that survey kicks off um, later this month. We're gonna do a big event for employees down at the Plaza Club. We're gonna have raffle prizes and things and so they can fill out their survey. We're actually gonna set it up like a polling center. So we have little booths that they can fill out their survey confidentially so they don't feel like anybody's um, watching what they write or how they fill out that survey, but wanna make it a fun event for them, encourage them to give their uh, candid feedback. And then um, as with the resident survey, we take that feedback and sort of put together action plans and, and try to rec you know fix our opportunities and keep doing what people like. So um, that's later this month. And then my last update is uh, we're having our flu shot clinic next week. So October 7th, it's going to be from nine to two. And I will send out all the details as to where and when uh, you all can come to get your flu shot. So look for that in tomorrow's memo. So we'll be distributing that. And with that, I'm gonna call up Yolanda Stout. She has a plea, a bingo plea, that she would like to make to all of you. Good morning, everybody. Just a little reminder to the new people, a special invitation to the residents that have been here. We want to invite you to come back and play bingo. We play every Wednesday here in the auditorium. Doors open at 6.30, bingo starts at 7. Please bring small bills, dollar bills preferred, up to $5. It's too hard to make uh, change if you bring big bills, but you can win big money, maybe. <laughs> the more people that come, the bigger the prize. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. And also, Kristen Small from MFS has a few things to share with you all. Good morning, Freedom Plaza. Wow, Angie, lots of great things going on here. How exciting you guys must be. So I'm Kristen. I've met quite a few of you. I'm with Military Family Support. We're the office right over here, um, right off the elevator, Suite 400. Military Family Support is the arm to the ROC office. We're the nonprofit arm, if those of you don't know anything about us. But what we do here is we support military men, women, veterans, and their families with funds from individuals and organizations. It all goes back into our programs, which are the scholarship programs, career grants, our JROTC certificate programs, the honor flight, which we just had two. One resident, Tom Hart, went last month and he escorted Mr. Foster. And Military Family Support um, provided the sponsorship for the Guardian to go, which was Tom. So that was a great event, um, a great, great program with the uh, honor flight. Um, we also do the service jobs as well. 
uh, with Dogs Inc. and we provide um, funding to for them to provide a veteran with a service dog, uh, somebody that has PTSD or if they are uh, blind or whatever the veteran's need might be. So those are some of the things that we do. I know you probably received one of our newsletters the last couple months. If you didn't, please stop by. This tells a lot more about what we've done in the past and what's going on. The exciting thing that I have coming up is every year in November for Veterans Day, we do the MFS slash Veterans Day thank you celebration for Freedom Plaza. And we will be hosting that again next month on November 8th on Friday from 3.30 to 5 down in the atrium. We're gonna have um, Diamond Jim, he's a, a DJ slash musician, come out for entertainment and it should be a fun event with food and appetizers, desserts and drinks. So we hope to see you all there. Um, a lot of you have been asking us about stopping by to ask about our little pocket calendars um, for 2025. I should have these in next uh, in the next week or so. They were on back order, so that's why I haven't received them yet. So um, as soon as they come out, I will be sending Stephanie a note to put it in the in the planner to let you know that they're available, and I'll have them out here at the next uh, town hall. If you have any questions about how you can support us and the veterans, please stop by my office or just to chat, um, ask any questions please feel free to stop by. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kristen. Um, that's all I have for today. Any questions from anybody? Talk about it. Gary? The uh, fire alarm that went off Sunday, it rang for like 20 minutes. I'm, I'm going to say I know it went off because I got the swift reach that or rave went, that went out when it was uh, cleared. I need to get more information on what happened because I'm not sure. Well, somebody said, well, we have to wait for the fire department to come to shut it off. I'm like, I don't think that's correct. That's not necessarily the case unless they couldn't identify the source of where it was coming from. So let me follow up and I'll share that tomorrow in the memo. And we're not doing COVID shots. We are not doing COVID shots. It's difficult, and I don't know if Lisa wants to talk about this. I know she hates it when I do that, and I didn't see her. She just left. She just left. Sure she did. Um, she has talked to Wal Walgreens about this. Um, they're hesitant to schedule an official um, clinic here um, just because it's to secure that many shots, you need to know how many are gonna have, but there's also a lot of paperwork involved. And if I'm being super candid, if we have a clinic here, they just say here to Lisa and Sherry and say, get all this paperwork done. So it, they're readily available if folks just wanna go to Walgreens. And I know uh, Jeff, is, does Jeff leave too? Yeah. Oh good, I can say this. Um, if you all wanna go to Walgreens to get a COVID shot, that's something that you can, we, we can schedule through transportation for you. And I'll make sure I do tell him that. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, well thank you all. It was a short meeting today, but we have lots of special guests coming up, assuming we don't have any more hurricanes. So everybody cross your fingers.